In the next few episodes, I'm going to focus on implementing artificial intelligence algorithms, which will first include genetic algorithm, then a simple neural network, and later eventually also other areas, I don't know that yet. The protagonist of these algorithms will be a little light green capsule, and regardless of how exactly I want to teach it, the first step must be giving them a brain. And that's the purpose of this first video, creating a capsule, and instead of me moving it with the arrow keys like I'm doing now, it has to make the moves on its own. And once it's capable of doing that, we can consider that the capsule does have a brain. The code, as always, is on GitHub, feel free to check it out. The starting point of this video's code is a copy of the blank game template that can be found in the folder of my physics engine, but I copied it in this new current projects folder as well. The content of it is the same as the content of the starting point folder in this smart caps repository. So if you want to code along, then this is what you will need in the beginning. I just opened that starting point folder in VS Code. There are four files in it. This one is the physics engine, which is quite large, but it won't be modified and it's not necessary to understand how it works. If you want to see how I built it, there is a playlist for that, so check that out as well if you want to. Then this file is the so-called game template, which is about setting up the environment, creating the objects, defining how they should act, things like that. Here is the user input, where it is defined that the player object's acceleration can be modified with the arrow keys. And finally, there is the index.html. If I open it in my browser, which in my case is Chrome, then I can see one red ball. If I press the arrow keys, it starts moving. And since the friction is set to zero in default, it won't stop after I release the keys. But if I set the friction to 0.05 right after creating it, and I also relocate the ball a little bit, then refresh the browser. And now if I release the arrow keys, I can see that the ball is slowing down. And I promise you light green capsules instead of red balls, and I don't want to disappoint anyone. So the player will be a capsule, which takes two more arguments. First the central point of the front circle, then the central point of the back circle, the radius of these circles, and finally the mass. And by the way, capsule and ball, those are objects defined in the physics engine, that's why I can just create them like this. And again, if you're interested about their implementation, everything's explained in the physics engine playlist. I will put a link for that playlist in the description. So let's see what's on the canvas now, instead of the red ball. And it's indeed a nice light green capsule. I'm going to start with a very simple brain. The capsule will simply move and rotate randomly on the canvas. But still, the question is, where do I start? Right now the control of the capsule is implemented in the user input function, which is called here. That means if I want something else to move the capsule instead, that's the function I would need to replace. I will create a new file, that's where the brain will be stored. And just like the user input file, this will also consist of one single function, at least for now, which will take a body object as an argument, and it will randomly set its left, right, up and down properties to true in every iteration. The simplest way to create a random mover would be defining a random integer from 0 to 4, and based on that value, either one of the four direction properties of the body object will be true, or if the number is 0, then they will all remain false. And since this function will be called over and over in the game loop, I need to set all the direction properties to false in the beginning, otherwise once one of them becomes true, it would stay true forever. So that would be the very first version of the brain. I have to define this new JavaScript file in the index.html, after the physics engine, before the game template, and I'm going to call this function inside of the game loop with the player object as its argument. And as you can see, the capsule now seems to be alive, struggling with its meaningless life in an infinite loop. So all good. I delete the user input line from the game template so that I won't have any direct control on its movements, like that. And here we go, a capsule that picks a random direction for its own movements in every frame. Now that the basic brain is working, I'm going to start modifying it. The first thing I change is that instead of changing the direction in every single frame, which is 60 times per second, I only want it to happen 20 times per second, which is still a lot for humans to see, but it's less computation intensive. This is not so important right now, but as the brain gets more and more complicated, 
doing every calculation 60 times per second could slow down the program. So in the game template I define a counter variable which starts at 0 and I set a condition in the game loop saying that if the counter can be divided by 3 then call the smartcups function and set the counter to 0. And after the condition I increase the value of the counter. So the difference is barely visible but the number of the calculations is now dropped by about 67% to one third of the previous version. The next thing I want to change is the way the directions are chosen. Instead of picking just one of the four directions every time, I want to randomly decide for each of the four arrow keys individually if they are pushed or not. So that more keys could be pressed in the same time, for example the capsule could then start rotating and move forward in the same frame. That would be two options for each of the four arrow keys, pressed or not pressed, which makes it 16 different cases altogether in every iteration. And I can create a random integer from 0 to 15, call it direction picker, and then convert it to a binary number with the two string 2 command that will turn 9, for example, into 1, 0, 1, and so on. And I need to make sure that these binary strings will consist of four digits every time, meaning that if their length is less than four, then there will be the correct amount of zeros standing in front of them. So 9 turns into 101 first, thanks to the toString function. Then with an additional zero in the first place, it will end up as 0101, thanks to this path start function. And instead of the switch case, I can go through the four bits of this direction picker variable one by one and set one of the direction properties to true if a specific bit's value is one and leave it as false if it's zero. For that I can use the parseInt function, which converts a string to an integer, because when I call the toString function, the direction picker turned into a string. And the first argument of the parseInt is the string I want to convert, and the second argument is the so-called radix, or in other words the base in mathematical numeral systems, meaning if it's 2, then the result will be a binary number. So these are the four conditions for the four bits of the direction picker. And I also console.log out the direction picker's value so that it will be easier to imagine what's happening. And let's take a look at the canvas and at the console as well. And random movement is still there, but this time it's based on these random values. And I want to mention that there is no official rule for how to pick a random direction for a light green crop tool. The previous version was working fine as well, I just prefer this one because it reflects better to pressing the arrow keys randomly. Now what if I want capsules with brains to have specific properties and methods, ones that only capsules with brain can perform? That's the typical case when I need to create a subclass of the capsule class, which I'm about to do. I will call that class smartcaps. So first of all I create a constructor. I use the super keyword there. Super keyword is used to access and call functions on an object's parents, which in this case is the capsule class. And below that I set the layer property to minus one, the frictions, the maximum speed, the color of the capsule, and its second component, the front circle, to a little bit different color. These properties are all in the capsule class in the physics engine. The point of the layer property is that collision handling happens only between objects that are on the same layer. It's set to one in default for moving objects. So every object is colliding in default, but layer minus one and minus two are exceptions because objects on layer minus one won't collide with each other, but they do collide with the walls. Walls have their layers set to zero in default because they are not moving objects. Smart cups in this case are all on layer minus one. That's it for the constructor and this random movings logic will be stored in a method which I will call action. I paste the code from there to there and rewrite the object dots to these dots. And that's it, I have a brand new smart caps class now that defines capsules with brains. Finally in the game template, player will be a new smart caps instead of a new capsule and here I call its action method. And now if I refresh the browser, it's supposed to look the same since all I did was refactoring the code. Oh, action is not a function. Yeah, that's because action is already a property of the body objects. It belongs to the fifth key next to the four arrow keys. So let's then call this, let's say, make move here. 
and also here and check again okay now it's better the most obvious result of creating this class is that now I can create an array of smart cups. So instead of the player, let's initialize a smart cups array and fill them up with three, let's start with three smart cups objects. And by using a for each loop in the game logic, they will all use their little brains and move around exactly the way they are supposed to, randomly pressing the imaginary arrow keys. They don't look smart yet, but we will get there soon. The last thing I'm planning to do brain-wise in this episode would be instead of constantly getting random directions, I create an array in the smart cups class as a property called brain and the random steps will be initialized in this array. That will happen in the create steps method. That method will get a size parameter which will determine how many steps are created in the brain array and this create steps method will be called right after a new smart cups is instantiated in the game template starting with 100 steps. Now in order to be able to keep track of the current step, which will tell which element of the brain array will be applied on each capsule, I create a new counter, which this time will be called step counter, and the step counter will only increase by one when the counter, the original one, can be divided by three, or when the make move method of the smart cups is called. And to let the make move method know what is the current value of the step counter, I will pass it as an argument. And back in the smart cups class, instead of the direction picker variable, which is not necessary anymore, the current element of the brain array will be checked in order to get the ball's direction. Now let's take a look at the canvas. The brain array is 100 elements long and 20 elements will be checked per second, one in every three frames, so the capsules should stop after five seconds. And they do, but not in a good way. Cannot read property zero of undefined. That's because I have to make sure that the step counter stops increasing after there are no more elements in the smart cups brain array. I can solve this problem with one extra condition in the for each loop in the game template. And to make sure that the capsules do stop properly, I create a new method in the smart cups class called stop where I set the arrow properties to false and set the capsule's acceleration vector to zero. So now if they can't make a step, they better stop. And actually the step counter should be incremented outside of the for each loop, otherwise it will grow too fast. Okay, let's check it out again, see what happens after five seconds. And all right, now they know when to stop that's a whole new level of intelligence. And I think this much of capsule taming will be enough for this first episode. Next I will move on with the genetic algorithm. First just a quick explanation with a simple example. And after that I will apply it to these capsules as well. So if you're interested in that, then see you in the next video.